Glory to Jesus. Uh -huh. We are waiting for choir to give us a song. Choir, go ahead. Give us a, a strong one, the one that will make us feel warm. be seated. God is good. And all the time, that is his nature. Wow. We have already said from the introduction to the Mass that today, we celebrate the solemnity of Corpus Christi, otherwise known as the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. And in this, we celebrate Jesus' gift of uh, the Eucharist. And the Eucharist according to Vatican II. Vatican II is assembly of the church. When the church will come together in that assembly known as a council, ecumenical council, in order to discuss about her life and the life of her children and her mission in the world. And so there, the church defines the Eucharist as the source and summit of our Christian life. The source and summit of the liturgy, the source and summit of our worship is the Eucharist. Everything we, as Christians, is meant to lead us to this source and summit of our life. And it is Christ who has made it so. In the Eucharist, we celebrate the sacrifice of Christ. The sacrifice of Christ we celebrate on the altar where we reenact an event that had happened on that very day when Jesus instituted this celebration of the Eucharist. He instituted this on Holy Thursday. And the following day, being Good Friday, he perfected it by offering himself, by pouring his blood on our behalf, pulling his blood in order to set us free. In the first reading, taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 24, onwards, it unveils the preparation of Christ's sacrifice, the sacrifice of Christ on the cross for our own sake. That is just a preparation, a prefiguration of what Jesus, the Son of God, was going to do in order to set us free. And in that first reading, we have heard, read very clearly. It said the blood is the blood of the covenant. And that is what Moses addressed the people of Israel. He said... All the words which the Lord has spoken, so 
sorry. In response to Moses, when he carried out that action in order to remind them, in order to show them of the Lord's love, of God's love, Yahweh's love for them, in the form of a covenant, and the covenant, their brothers and sisters, as we know, is an agreement. An agreement between God and man. It could be even an agreement between, you know, one party or the other. It could be people, man and man. And in the covenant, blood is always poured. In the covenant, there is always a blood that is poured. And one of the examples is that when the people of Israel were being led out of the, out of the land of captivity in Egypt, the Lord was leading them in the pillar of fire. But then before that, he had directed that a sacrifice has to be offered. A sacrifice has to be offered. And then, in that sacrifice, animals were brought. And these animals were divided into two, half and half. And then the fire passed through them. And so what is the division, what is the significance of the division of this animal? Blood was poured. And when blood was poured, it was a reminder to the people that when you enter into a covenant, the very moment that you breach the covenant, the very moment that you are not able, that you fail to keep to the promises that bind the two of you together, this is what should happen to any of you, to any party that failed to keep the covenant. He will be divided into two, just like what had happened in animals. In any case, in the book of Exodus, Moses selected young people. He asked young people, to offer sacrifices of bulls. And so he took half of the blood of those bulls in the bowels, and the other half he splashed on the altar. Then he took the blood of the other half and sprinkled it on the people as a reminder. And he said to them, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with his words. Now, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you. It is important to remember that the blood of the covenant gained prominence in the time of Jesus with his disciples. And it gained covenants, prominence the more after the liberation of the people from the land of captivity. The blood of the covenant gained prominence with the people of Israel when they were liberated from the land of captivity in Egypt. And you remember that event when, after God was asking Pharaoh to let his people go, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened. On the night, the angel of God told the people of Israel to kill a lamb and smear the blood on the lintels of the door so that the angel of death will come. And where the angel of death will come and see the blood smeared on the, on the lintels of the door, that household will be saved. 
And so after they saw what happened, and so that gained prominence in their lives. Now in the time of Jesus also, they continue to celebrate that, that Passover, when the people were liberated, because when the angel of death was passing, he saved the people, and where there was no blood smeared on the doors, the firstborn died. And so with that, it led to their own liberation. So they continued to celebrate this. Jesus in his time was celebrating with his disciples, and that is exactly why in the gospel of today, the disciples came to him when the days of the unliving bread were coming nearer. They asked him, where do you want us to go and prepare the Passover for you? And he sent to them his disciples. He said, go into the city. A man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the householder, the teacher says, where is my guest room? Where is my guest room? And so he says, it's an example that Jesus also was celebrating with his disciples. The liberation of the people of Israel, the people of God, from slavery, from the hands of Pharaoh, from captivity in Egypt. And so it happened exactly now, let us try to situate this man in our own lives. The Lord is asking you, where is my room? Where is my guest room? Where I will come to celebrate with you as my disciples, the feast of the Passover. Passover is liberation from slavery. So he's asking, where is my room? Remember, Christ is the one knocking at the door of our hearts. Anyone that opens, he says, I will come in with my father and we make a home in that person. And if he comes to make a home in your heart, then you will be at peace. You will be secured. And if you are at peace, in solemnity, in happiness, in joy, you will be as happy as anything. And the person who is happy is always in the mood of celebration. Anything that happens is always in the mood of celebration. Why? Because the Lord will come to make a home in his heart. So he's asking you, where is my guest room? Where is my guest room? Now, Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples on Holy Thursday when he took bread and wine and offered to God and gave it to his disciples. He said to them, this is my body, this is my blood. Do it in memory of men. And the following day he was killed. He is the lamb that was slaughtered, the victim that was killed, that offered as a sacrifice. It is very interesting that the disciples who came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to celebrate the Passover? Jesus told them, go, you will meet a man. And they didn't ask about the victim. They didn't ask about the lamb. Because on the festival, the feast of the Passover, there is always a lamb. Similar to what Isaac did when his father Abraham was taking him to go and sacrifice, he asked all questions. But then he turned to his father and asked, Father, we have taken everything, but where is the lamb? Where is the lamb? And Abraham told him, don't worry, the, the Lord will provide. He said it ignorantly, but then the Lord actually provide. Now, in the Last Supper, in the Pascal feast that Christ initiated, instituted 
as a memorial in the Eucharist where we celebrated, the disciples were asked to go to a place and ask the man, where is my guest room? They didn't ask for the victim. And so he himself, he offered bread as his body and blood as a wine or wine as his blood. So he offered himself physically the following day so that he himself is that lamb, the lamb that was slaughtered to pour blood for our own sake. That is a sacrifice that Christ made for you and for me. And he say, he continued to do this in memory of men. So in that sacrifice, there is offering of himself, the pains, the sorrows, the blood, and everything. There is suffering in summary. So for us to do this, to continue to do this in memory of Jesus Christ our Lord, we have to take his place by accepting suffering upon ourselves. We are safe to suffer by making up your mind, first of all, to come very early in the morning to the church, to come and sit down and listen to the word of God and share the bread on the altar. It's a sacrifice that you are making. It's an offering. You are going to consume him in the altar and we become that which we eat. The theologian says, when we eat uh, uh, the body of Christ, our own aspiration is to be like him, to be another Christ. So that we harbor Christ in our hearts. We carry him in our hearts. And so that we continue to radiate him anywhere that we find ourselves. When we meet with others, they see Christ in you by the love that we share, by the pain that we endure in order to let them enjoy, by the pain also that we endure. Be it in our families, we make a lot of sacrifices, either for our parents, for our fathers, for our mothers. Some are sick. We make a lot of sacrifice for them. That is suffering. That is sacrifice. That is sharing in the life of Christ, in the suffering of Christ, for the sake of the good of another. And doing this, we are in communion with him. And when we come to celebrate the Eucharist, we share the communion we're in communion with him, in unity with him. And so this unity should not remain only in the church, but anywhere that we find ourselves, in the different responsibilities that we hold, in the offices that are given to us, be it by our own achievements, by our own hard work. We remain in union with them when we do the right thing. When we treat those who come to us, the way God will treat them, we are in communion with him. When we offer love, we are in communion with him. When we live in unity, we are in communion with him. When we live according to the Beatitudes, blessed are those who do this and so on, we are in communion with him. So as we celebrate today, Corpus Christi, it is a gift offered to us by Christ. So that in that gift, we have a share in it. And he say, anyone who eats my body and drinks my blood will live forever. Even if he dies, I will raise him up on the last day. Today, Christ is offering himself as bread and wine for us to be shared. And so be that bread to others. Look at suffering that is there. Look at the difficulties that are there. Look at that poor man that is walking on the street there. Look at that poor woman. Look at that poor neighbor. If there is anything for you to do, do. And of course, 
you have the capacity to do. Doing so, you become bread that is shared for the salvation of others, even if temporary. temporary. We pray that God in his own infinite goodness and mercy will bless his words in our hearts through Christ our Lord.